and just covering some of the divisions that's going on until we got through all uh, the divisions in the NFL. And we have gotten through all of them except for one. And that one uh, is the AFC North. So, yes, we covered all the other AFC divisions. We've covered all the NFCs. So it's one last division that we're going to touch base on uh, right now. Uh, and then it's going to be football time before you know it. So AFC North, for those who don't know, it consists of the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Baltimore Ravens, Cincinnati Bengals, and the Cleveland Browns. So we're going to talk about all four of those teams uh, and, and what I see coming out from those teams this season. So let's just start with the Bengals. Uh, Bengals are in trouble. They're in a mess uh, at this point. They lost A.J. Green uh, to a, a turf incident, if you will. They were on at a school campus, and some people were saying that the, maybe – the, the field wasn't ideal, but no one has really went in depth about it. But what it is, A.J. Green got hurt and he's out six to eight weeks. So he's going to be missing uh, regular season games. Uh, Andy Dalton, they, they, their question marks continues about him, whether or not he should be the starting quarterback. Should the you know Cincinnati Bagels or should they have went after uh, a quarterback to replace Andy Dalton? Now, here's the thing about it with the Bengals organization. We've seen it with Marvin Lewis. They give guys time after time after time after time uh, chances. So has Andy Dalton chances ran out? You know, I mean, the Bengals, they're cats, you know, big cats. But, you know, uh, is he on his ninth life at this point? Uh, offensive line has been a little bit of a struggle. Uh, and where's your – other than A.J. Green, where are you getting your offensive production? Tyler Boyd just got a new deal, so props to him for getting his money uh, and, and getting a new deal. But if A.J. Green is not in the game, guess who's going to get all the attention? Tyler Boyd, because nobody is really scared of John Ross at this point, even though he is – uh, of what a four two something a four three you know a high four two whatever it is guy he is a burner uh, he has not been able to translate that onto the football field for success so uh, that is not scaring anyone I don't know anyone on the Cincinnati Bengals defense that people are really talking about to say to say you know what you got to worry about these guys on defense. Uh, and, and last but not least, the, I think the bright spot that they have is Joe Mixon, uh, but. He has to be able to have holes to run through. So the Bengals, I think it's going to be a big struggle for them. Uh, they will be uh, a, how you say, lottery pick. But, you know, that's basketball. But they, they will be a early pick come next season, probably in the top five. And they'll be looking probably for another quarterback, unfortunately. Uh, I think the Andy Dalton uh, experience probably comes to an end after this year. Uh, next team up that we got is the Baltimore Ravens, and they are in a bit of a transition themselves. Uh, now, Lamar Jackson will be the full-time quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens. So uh, here's the thing, plain and simple. Can Lamar throw? Can he be an NFL quarterback uh, that can throw the ball? And I think I believe in him more than I think a lot of people are giving him credit you know, it, it, he is a, it is a project. It is a process. Uh, it may not, you know, take off or, or move as fast as people will want it to be, but they are going to be a run heavy team. They picked up Mark Ingram. They didn't pick him up just, you know, just to put him out there and everybody say, you know, oh, look, you know, they, they look, you know, nice in their uniforms. No, they're going to run the ball and they are going to utilize Lamar, you know, in this. But I think he is going to surprise a lot of people that he's going to pass more. But then he also he's going to get his completion uh, percentage up in this offense. Will it take off immediately? No, I think after probably like halfway through the season, we'll probably see uh, some prog uh, progressions from Lamar. But he, he is going to have to get his wide receivers involved. They went and drafted, you know, uh, guys as well on the offensive side to help out. So you got to utilize that. You got to utilize your tight ends. Uh, the defense, I think, will be all right. You got Earl Thomas there. He's replacing Eric Weddle. So uh, I feel confident about that, that Earl, he'll be ready to go. Uh, they did lose guys like uh, Terrell Suggs and, you know, others. Uh, but this team, you know, in, in this organization, how they have been ran, they have been ran tip top, you know, uh, and they should be 
all right to a certain degree. I mean, they went to the playoffs. They went to the playoffs, and, and I don't see why they can't make it back to the playoffs or at least challenge to, to go to the playoffs. Now, the next team, questions, questions, questions. I've said this before. Uh, who was that that I said it about? It was the Cleveland Cavaliers. When they when they traded uh, Kyrie for Isaiah Thomas, I said, and, and they got Derrick Rose and, and D-Wade was there and all this. I said, this team is a bunch of questions. And to me, that is what the Pittsburgh Steelers are this season. They are going to be a team of questions, question marks. And one of the questions is, is how will Ben Roethlisberger be now that Antonio Brown, you know, is gone? Yes, Juju is there, but he doesn't have that all pro uh, on the outside and then also a guy lined up in the backfield. No knock on James Conner and no knock on Juju. It's just we are still waiting for them to do it on a consistent basis at a high level. Uh, but is Ben going to be able to will a team? Now, when Ben was young, he had guys that was on defense uh, that were able to take some of the pressure off of him. So he didn't have to do it all on his own. But then when he got Antonio and some of the other guys you know, around there, he was able to be the man. Now, can he be the man on, on a team that might be considered lesser of, of a team than it was before? Now, and, and it's hard to say that because Juju... Uh, came off a heck of a year, and James Conner didn't do do too bad himself under the circumstances that people were trying to put on him and, and compare him to Le'Veon, which was unfair. You didn't need to compare him to Le'Veon. The brother did a good job, and he did what he was supposed to do, and he should be getting better. Uh, now, on the defensive side, they got a guy uh, uh, in Devin Bush out of Michigan that they are going to be looking at big things. And I think that's where it's going to, it's going to start and end probably for the Pittsburgh Steelers is because they have yet to find anyone to replace Ryan Shazier. He was obviously their heart and everything else to that team. Uh, he was the guy that made the calls and, and, and he was the quarterback of the defense. And now they're looking for that to be, you know, a guy in Devin Bush. You got uh, T.J. Watt, you know, on this team. Uh, Joe Hayden is in the background, uh, and, and, and I said it like he's a singer or something, but he, he's playing corner uh, for this team. So can this defense step themselves up and, and be uh, the defense that we've known before out of Pittsburgh, a top 10 defense, if not a top five? I think they got a lot, you know, to, to cover. They got to, you know, climb a ladder a little bit. But anything can happen in the NFL in a year. That's that's one thing about the NFL. You can be completely uh, uh, two wins or uh, the Cowboys, for example. They were 1-15 uh, with Troy Aikman. And then they came back and they turned everything around. So you can turn things around very fast. Uh, and, and the Steelers defense, they could. Uh, but Ben Roethlisberger, the new offense, new players, or not the new players, Full time, let's just say that, and you got A B and, and Bell gone. How is this team going to do during the season? And the last team that we got on here, and this is, you know, I guess you could say this is the all hype team, if you will, because ever since last year, I've been hyping this team up before the season started. I said the Cleveland Browns are on their way. And they are here right now. And when I say here, I'm not saying that they are here to win because they got to prove that. But they are here to be relevant and to be talked about uh, consistently. And they got cats that they got young. Their team is young. So I I do. And I'm going to say this. I I think the Cleveland Browns, they're going to make some mistakes. And there are going to be some games that they probably should lose that they're going to go ahead and climb their way out of because they don't know any better. You got a guy in Baker Mayfield who who he will never, ever, ever give up and and say it's over until, you know, the clock reads zero. 
You got Jarvis Landry and Odell. You got Nick Chubb. And, and a lot of people slept on Nick Chubb. And I think it was, you know, more because of the injury. Uh, he's the real deal. They traded Duke Johnson. They got this kid, Hilliard. And then Kareem Hunt is not showing up probably until like week 10 or week 11 of the season because he got suspended. I think Nick Chubb is going to surprise a lot of people and that surprisingly kind of forgot about him out of Georgia, you know, because he got had the injury. But I think he's going to surprise a lot of people, man. And he's really, really going to make people understand that he exists. But they will lose games. Uh, that and and learn how to win. Let's just say that. And I'm happy that they are relevant, but I'm not ready to say, you know, you, you know, last year I said they would make the playoffs and I had to backtrack off that because I'll say, okay, Jelani, you, you, you tripping a little bit, but I can see them towing the line this year. I, are they going to go 13 and three? No. Uh, I don't see uh, the Browns doing anything like that. But I do it, – it, their ceiling, I think 10 and 6. I think 10 and 6 would be uh, a good ceiling for this year, and it possibly gets them into to the playoffs. So uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the AFC North. Those are some of the things to, to, to consider uh, and, and some of the things that you can talk about with some of your friends, you know, uh, when you are talking about the NFL, you can say, you know what, Johnny was talking about that, and, and I heard this information, blah, 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 you know, and they'd be like, man, you really, you, yeah, you, you did it, man, you really told him, didn't you? Like, yeah, yeah, all right, I'm sorry, I got off base, but last thing I want to touch, based on, we're going to go to a break after this, but last thing I want to touch is, is, um, Just recently, Jalen Smith of the uh, Dallas Cowboys, linebacker for Dallas Cowboys, got a extension. And you know what? Me and Lopan forgot to check how much he got. I think it was something like $64 million, you know, uh, for an extension. I think 35 is guaranteed. But he got them to show me the money! And he got his money. So congratulations to Jalen Smith. But that's not really why I want to uh, mention Jalen Smith, because I I am so happy when this news came out. And and here's why. I'm not a Notre Dame fan. Can't stand him. Tilly. I am not a Cowboys fan. Oh, my stomach gets upset when I think about him. Tilly. But that's not what this is about. This is all about a young man who didn't give up, who was actually given lemons and he made lemonade and what i mean by this his last game we've talked about guys sitting out on college bowl games because they're they're worried about the injury happening and then it affects them getting into the nfl or their draft stock and jalen smith was in his very last football game as a college player and he had a a, a foot injury a leg injury where his nerves were damaged. That is, that's not a broken ankle. That's not a hamstring or something like that. Broke his collarbone or anything. No one knew what was going to happen with Jalen Smith. The Cowboys took a chance on him and drafted him in the second round. And, and if Jalen Smith gets through that game, we are talking about him going more than likely top 10. In that draft, in the first round, top 10, and an injury just like that. Everyone started questioning him. Everyone was like, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to play football. I don't know if he's ever going to be able to get the feeling back like he needs it in his nerves. And this guy, I mean, I saw, and he just kept having the faith. He kept having the belief. He kept being positive and he kept pushing forward. Like I talk about at the end of my show all the time, he he just embodied what it was I'm not going to lose. And it's not, you know, the, the extension or anything like that. It's more of him getting back to being able to play football. And this is the, you know, enjoying 
the fruits of his labor.